Documents show that Clement of Alexander, and Alexandria, a bishop, first deserved the Epiphany Feast in 217 CE. The Feast of the Epiphany was introduced in the Western Church in the 4th century and is celebrated each year on the 6th day of January, except for at St. Mary's this year. <laughs> we pushed Epiphany forward a week. But the 4th century, by the 4th century, there is ample evidence that Epiphany baptism celebration had become a tradition and ranking with Easter and Pentecost as one of the three principal feasts, festivals of the church. At St. Mary's, we honor the Western tradition of Epiphany by highlighting the Magi's arrival as each king makes its own slow and regal entrance, dressed elaborately and bearing gifts for the Christ child. We start our service today with Liturgy of the Word for the readings for this week. Uh, and continue our journey to the Epiphany pageant and end with some prayer. May the Spirit be alive in all of us as we unfold the story of the Epiphany. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom of God and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open to all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily <clears throat> magnify your holy name. For Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, 
Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because of his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel, Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. All of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. We will recite it in unison. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places, and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word among us, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind the and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelous today. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body is not hidden from you. While I was being made as a secret, and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished to me. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the same. To count them all, my life span would need to be like yours. <clears throat> A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is un United to a prostitute becomes one body with her. For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, 
which you have from God, and that you are not your own. For you were brought with a price, bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
to be present with him. In the story of Samuel, this is exactly what God is calling Samuel to do. Get up. Do more. The psalm is so beautiful, too, because it reminds us that Christ, God made us. He knit us together. And he knit us together as a church as well. So, um, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make today is you just don't know what you're being called to become. And that's what prayer is all about. That's what church community is all about. That's what your church family is all about. It's being together in a community of Christians so that God can call you to do more, to be more, to become more. So as you're going through your everyday routine, think about what tools, what gifts you're given <clears throat> to become, to not just be. Maybe God's calling you to become a caretaker for a family member because that's where you're needed. Sometimes an illness makes us stop so that we can become something else. We can transform. So, you know, that transformation makes you a better, better person, too. A better Christian, better human, because you just don't know what the other person is going through next to you. So, use the season of epiphany to appreciate the joy and the beauty of the pageant that we're about to see. But also, think about what you can become. <coughs>
King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, by no, are by no means least the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. He had sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising, until it stopped at the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left their own country by another road. As for Balthazar, Melchior, these three kings of the Orient are found complete with crowns and camels in every nativity scene. Yet if you look closely at the Gospel account of the Magi, you won't find these names. Actually, there is no mention of how many magi there were, or that there were kings riding camelback. This is what we sometimes call pious legend. It is, long -standing, it is a long-standing tradition, and although it is not based on Holy Scripture, in a cultural way, it embellishes our faith and understanding of the incarnation of our Lord. Actually, the ancient feast of the Epiphany celebrates three events tied together by the meaning of the word Epiphany as appearance or manifestation. Jesus suddenly appears as who he really is, Messiah and God, to the Magi, and then at Cana when he works his first miracle, and again when he is baptized in the Jordan by John the Baptist. In the early church, Epiphany was therefore second only to the Easter Vigil as the time to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. Blessed water from those baptisms was then used to bless the dwellings of the faithful, and it became customary to write over the doorposts of the blessed homes C plus B plus M, meaning Christ blesses this house, Christus Benedictinensium. Since the three kings were also remembered at the same time, someone decided to give them names and to use C, B, M as their initials, Casper, Balthazar, and Melchior. The names stuck. Now for a moment, let us flash back in time to how this whole series of events began. A visit by an angel of the Lord to a young lady, Mary, sets everything in motion. A lesson from the Gospel of Luke. And the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. 
he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to the Judean town in the hill country. When she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted her cousin Elizabeth, who was expecting her, uh, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child left in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sign of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the holiness of his servant. Surely from now on all the mysteries will all be blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and the holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has been strengthened with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts and their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months, and then returned to her home. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end.
In that region there were shepherds living in the field, <clears throat> keeping watch over the flock by night. One can imagine six or seven guys at night, two of them watching, marching, going around the river, they're looking for animals who might have eat their sheep. One maybe with a small fire warm in his hand. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And when I was a kid, the next thing, and they were sore afraid. I never did understand what that meant. But they were scared to death. In a word, they were terrified. And you would be too. And the angel, having made a lasting impression upon the shepherds, how lasting, we're still talking about it 20 centuries later, said to them, said to them, calm down, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you who is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. <laughs>
and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. <laughs> For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was saved him. For our sake, he was crucified under the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through our hearts. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Praise the people of four, three, and the Book of Common Prayer, page 387. We will pray responsibly. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. And we all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That you may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all our government and all authority in the nations of the world. And there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our hearts be kind of labor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon you. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in the kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We ask for your prayers for those who are sick or need our prayers at this time. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and all those who we have in our hearts. We give thanks for the witness of God's people today in the diocese cycle of prayer. We pray for Pastor Mark Hansen, his spouse Heaven, the wardens, vestry, and people of St. Clement's Massey. We give thanks for their Hispanic Latino ministry. We remember this week of prayer for Christian unity. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, for those celebrating anniversaries this week. We ask for your continued prayers for Reverend Stephanie Clayville and Lynn Wilton as they respond to their calls for all others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us and forgive us all of your, our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And also with you. Let us greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. <laughs> Reverend Steph Playville, Vicar here at St. Mary's.
Kokomo. For those who are joining us online, uh, welcome uh, or welcome back if you've been joining us uh, over uh, the year. Um, if anyone's viewing, thank you for being with us. Please continue to follow us on um, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can also follow us on our website, www.stmaryspokemoke.org. There you can get information on our events, services, service bulletins, uh, find out a little bit more about our parish. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a member, call our office. We're happy to have you come to service uh, and meet our wonderful congregation. All are welcome here at St. Mary's. Um, so I am, I'm back from taking general ordination and um, that was interesting, draining, and challenging all at the same time. Um, it uh, was a great learning experience. I'm glad it's behind me. Um, we find out at the end of February, you can either score proficient or not proficient in the six areas of, um, of our faith. Um, and they include any, everything from Holy Scripture to um, ministry to for the practice of ministry. So um, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I still have um, six more months of school, I believe. Uh, in April will be done, and there will be a graduation exercise um, from that program in May or June. Um, I've also had to begin a clinical pastoral education program that will take place over 16 weeks. This is a very, very intense program. Um, it's an out, two hours of schooling um, once a week, so I'm going to school Monday and now Wednesday, and then I do 300 hours of practicum at Title Health. I'm very blessed that Title Health, my employer, and Baton Rouge General Hospital agreed to sponsor me through this program, so that meant I didn't I would have to pay tuition. St. Mary's doesn't have to pay tuition. Uh, it's a $1,500 program, and um, the opportunity came along, and I felt very blessed and, and took the opportunity to meet this final requirement for ordination. So um, CP is a canon of the church. It's a requirement um, of my education towards priesthood and prior to ordination. So uh, we're in the last last phase of it, so keep, your, keep me in your prayers. Um, and this goes along with um, being, you know, you're just being, you're just kind of being and doing the things that you need to do so that you can become some, someone who God called you to be. So, um, as always, thank you for your support of my ministry and my call. Um, it wouldn't be possible without you and my church family here. And uh, we'll soon be at the end of my journey. So, hang in there. <laughs> We're looking forward to what God has called me to be. Um, just a, a reminder, we are going to, are we going to have our annual meeting on the 21st? Um, so that was in your uh, information in your bulletin. You can join by Zoom. I encourage the entire congregation to join us. There are going to be several things brought forward for vote, including vacancies on the vestry and um, some discussion around our bylaws. Um, reports for those are due to the office for inclusion. If you haven't turned it in, please try to do that by Monday for sure because we have a lot of materials to print. Um, and then Lent is coming. Um, so if it wasn't already a lot for me, I have to go through my Lenten journey while I'm doing this uh, intense program. But, you know, God leaves things in front of you for a reason. So it's coming up, and I encourage you to spend Valentine's and Day and... Uh, Ash Wednesday, which fall on the same day, with me and with your Lord, and um, wear your bread that day so that uh, we can celebrate the imposition of Ash at 6 p.m. at that service. Um, we we'll also, every Wednesday night, have evening prayer through, um, through Lent on Zoom, so those that cannot attend church can join um, in with the service with us. So, um, we did have a meeting about the 156th annual convention coming up in March. Uh, Greg and Bernadette will be our delegates, and Kathy and Bob will be our alternates. Thank you all for taking that time out of your schedules um, and taking on that responsibility for us. Um, there will be a Zoom coming up in February 
and this year's uh, theme is imaginative leadership and congregational vitality. So I'm interested to hear some of the programs that they're going to be offering uh, coming forward through uh, 2024. So any other announcements from the congregation? Just a reminder that this Wednesday is St. Martha's Guild dinner meeting at 6 o'clock or <coughs> So um, I've seen most of you have already made reservations with Martha for dinner. If not, please contact her as soon as possible so we can place our order. Thank you. Anything else? Um, okay. I'm going to do best. No. Share spiritually, and she's got something going on in there right now. I can tell you that Bess has over two thousand dollars in the bank right now, so um, I think it's, uh, I'm going to start trying to find somebody to give Bess to, not Bess, but the money, give some money to. So, um, does anybody have anything for Bess this morning? <coughs> Bess, Bess, oh, Tom, thank you for his wallet. This is just for the uh, Epiphany pageant we just we just saw. Very good, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tom. And thanks to everybody who uh, participated. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
and lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and shameless of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, by the leading star, you manifested your only Son to be the peoples of the earth. Lead us, lead us who know you, you now by faith to your presence, where you may see the we may see the glory of your faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.